We've got in the sun MPs bidding for Lee Anderson to mm -hmm, return. Mm -hmm. We've also had last week this speech, or a few days ago, the speech from Rishi Sunak regarding um, the divisions mm. that we have seen. He removed the whip from Lee Anderson last week, former deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, as a result of the comments he made about Sadiq Khan, saying that he had Islamist mates. However, um, on the subject of these divisions that the Prime Minister referenced, we've got now the front page of the Mail on Sunday saying that UK spies are telling MPs that the terror threat is at the highest since 9-11. So, um, my question, Stella, to you on this story is, does this validate what the Prime Minister was saying on Friday, that clearly, if UK spies are saying that we have this really high terror threat, clearly from Islamist terror as a result of the, the war in the Middle East being used, and I quote, as a recruitment advert by global terror groups. Wasn't he right to reference division? Wasn't he right to reference this lack of British values? Because you don't get mm. any less British values than plotting a terror threat against the British nation. The division should definitely be addressed and threats should always be addressed. That's what I said with the Lindsay Hoyle uh, uh, debacle last week as well. When there are threats to violence, we, are, we address them. We don't um, give in to whatever is the demand uh, that's going on. I think with Rishi Sunak, what's happening right now, firstly, with, with, with the comments he, he, with the speech he gave on Friday, I think he's right to make a speech about extremism at this time. I agree that there is a lot of division. I do think... Um, there is some justification in terms of having a higher a higher risk for, for, for terror, but I do think that he made it primarily for political reasons. And I do think that he didn't handle the situation with Lee Anderson very well, because what it shows to me is he has this fear of the Reform Party and of the Conservatives not being seen to um, be right-wing enough, because for whatever reason, uh, it seems to me that Rishi Sunak thinks that they will be gaining more votes or losing more votes from a party like Reform unless they see they, they show that they will allow their MPs to make comments that seem to be a bit Islamophobic. Basically, what they what politicians have been talking about a lot is you need to make sure that we're allowed to say what people think without us having to, you know, check our language for political correctness or whatever. And a lot of people have been saying that on both sides of the argument, that, uh, like both on anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, and then on immigration and on other issues. You see a lot of people on, on the Times, I think it was a couple of days ago, there was this article about, oh, we need to be allowed to speak about immigration honestly. And there is this debate that keeps on coming but aren't, up. aren't you um, somewhat contradicting yourself? Because on the one hand, you're saying, look, Rishi Sunak isn't, isn't wasn't fast enough on Lee Anderson and wasn't perhaps strong enough mm. on it. But on the other hand, you're praising him for saying, look, these divisions are wrong. Well, surely Rishi Sunak did the right thing by calling no, out I'm these not divisions. Really, I, I, I don't praise him. I think that he's, he's doing something... Uh, too late and not in a very honest way because in my opinion he's still he's the only reason why he hasn't kicked Lee Anderson out of the Tory party which in my opinion is is the correct response because if he's holding the Labour party to such high standards in terms of anti-semitism he needs to apply the same okay, standards. Renee I can see that you are literally about to gnaw on the table so oh, I need I know, need to just bring you in. Just as Benedict said yesterday when we had him it is this left-wing approach to oh he's only making that statement because it's political which actually is the smokescreen to not allow us to talk about the elephant in the room which is that the whole all of the West has a massive problem with Islamist extremism and we have to be able to talk about it and talking about it is not Islam Islamophobic. Mm -hmm. uh, my issue with with my issue with saying that Islam is, 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 is that the West has a problem with Islamism. What I don't like about the speech Rishi Sunak made and what I don't like about the way this debate is going is that it, you're making it sound as if the problem is with Muslims more, no, more, not. more generally. Not, not you, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, not you in particular. But the way this debate is going, it is alienating moderate Muslims who do not agree with the extremist rhetoric, who do uh, embrace British values, who have British citizenships, who, who live among us. And the same goes 
uh, for for when when everyone who goes to the uh, pro Palestine protests is being branded as an extremist or an Islamist or or a mob, and this is where I disagree with Sunak a lot. Where when you describe all of these people as a mob, you are making me, them but, feel that like they are not part of the, the mainstream. But, but if the threat is coming from Islamist extremists, aren't the British public and people of the Islamic faith intelligent enough to mm -hmm. know and if you are of the Islamic faith and you know that that doesn't mean you mm -hmm. call it out then 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 surely it's it, it's right to call it out that's where literally UK spies are saying where the threat is 90% of the 40,000 or so people who are on the terror watch list are as a result of Islamic terror so mm -hmm. that is where the threat is and so I just wonder how you would suggest that threat is addressed and called yeah. out yeah. if your worry is by doing so it sort of is driving what you perceive to be Islamophobia or anti-Islamic sentiment. So when you look at how terror threats in the past have been addressed very often the way the police is tipped off is by people who are already in the same community with these people so their family their friends so if you're talking about Islamist terrorism, the, the extremist terrorists and the threat of and how do you address that, the way you address that is that by recruiting the Muslim community on, 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 the, on the war against terrorism yeah. and by making them feel like they are part of the British community, not by alienating them, not by telling them you are all terror all terrorists he, he hasn't by done acknowledging that. but but when you're calling when you're calling uh, uh, millions of people a mob that is running the country when you are saying well, when when he didn't do that but conservative yes. uh, Suella Braverman said Suella Braverman said that Islamists are in control of the country that a mob is running the country and Rishi Sunak has used very similar language to describe what is going on when you're saying that, when you're telling to, ma to the Muslim community in, in the UK, which is not, you know, one community, I shouldn't, I shouldn't use this, this phrase, but when you're telling them that, then you're alienating but that's, them. That's, that's Islamists. That's yes. Not, that, if, if, if Suella Braverman had said, Muslims are running the country, I would ag agree that that would be a step too far. But Islamism is different to being Islamic in your faith. Islamism is extremism. So therefore, again, the language used does not back up what you are saying, that it is alienating the entire Islamic community from being British, because she is talking about a particular um, subsection of the Islamic community is who alienating. are extremists. It is alienating the, the community because it is it is fueling Islamophobia. But, okay, well, it if is I, fueling an emotion. But, but, that, but, but again, that's, that's, I don't think that's the fault of the people calling it out. If I were to say... Um, right-wing extremists are running the country and it, 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 it's a terrible thing. That's not calling out anyone who has right-wing politics. That's not calling out anyone who's centre-right. Anyone who is, who is intelligent enough who's centre-right in their politics would say, well, OK, that doesn't mean me. That means extremists. Well, that's the same as an Islamist. An Islamist is not someone who is Islamic. And they if, do, if, though. They do feel that way. When, when, when the left... Their feelings when, are not when, something when that is... When soft left-wing people say, oh, right-wing people... When, when people always, from the reform party, they always get... Uh, Nigel Farage, he always gets very offended when people call him far-right. A far-right extremist. Yes. A right-wing extremist. No, even if you just call them far-right. extremist is different even to someone who is right. Even if you just call him far-right, right, he will get offended. Stella, we've got a situation in this country where we cannot address anything that involves the Muslim community, their holy book, or their prophets. So we've got a teacher in hiding in this country, has been so for three years with his family because he dared hold up a cartoon of them having in a British school. Yeah, I've, I'm, we I'm have a mother, yeah. a mother who had to parade her autistic boy in front of a council of Muslims to apologise for scuffing a Quran. She was wearing a headscarf to do so with our police sitting alongside her who had organised the meeting. This cannot be accepted and calling it out has to be all of the time done so that we can actually establish that we are in Britain, there is a British culture that we must respect. Amongst that, we must respect all religions, but I can promise you, if a child scuffed a Bible in the playground tomorrow, nothing would happen. Two things can be true at the same time, Renée. What you are saying can be true at the same time as me saying that Rishi Sunak's comments are not helping us s solve the problems that we are having with the terror threats, and it is and and him not addressing Islamophobia so within it? his own. How do we solve it? 
well, to begin with, there is absolutely no need for Islamophobic comments. Rishi Sunak needs to get rid of Lee Anderson. He has no place in the Conservative Party. Comments like that have no place in a governing party. I do not know the specific case you are referring to. I do think they have are... Have you looked at Sadiq I'd... Khan's past? Have you looked at the... What are you referring to here about Sadiq Khan's... Have you Khan's... looked at the support that Sadiq Khan has given to Muslim Islamist extremists? Islamist extremists? Shall, are I you saying... you, shall I send you some of it later for you to read? Yes, because this is a very serious, this is a very serious accusation. Sadiq you are Khan suggest... was a chairman of the Muslim Council of Britain. Okay, so you are they suggesting... They praise. Are you they suggest... praise Jihadi John. You are suggesting that uh, Sadiq Khan is praising, has praised Jihadi Shall I send to... you some information? Is this, is this something you I... want to go on record? No, no, no. no, say... no I, I think what... Okay. Look up uh... an article by, by Majid Nawaz, who actually like Sadiq Khan because he got him out of prison when he was an extremist and he will talk about the people that Sadiq has kept company with so you can see why people so you do actually believe you can okay this is important if you actually do believe that Sadiq Khan is controlled by Islamists no I don't believe I that I think I think people Stella I okay. don't believe you he, think he's Stella, influenced let by me Islamists speak. Okay. I don't believe he is controlled by Muslims I think some of his choice of people that he is associated with in the past just like Jeremy Corbyn who is associated with people from Hamas, it doesn't look good, Stella, when these people are there now politicians. You are doubling down here. You are doubling down on a very moderate politician. No, That's no, my... Well, okay, 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 Sadiq just... Khan is an extremely moderate yes, politician. Yes, I know, but however, Sadiq Khan himself has actually described moderate Muslims as Uncle Tom's yep, himself. He, he had apologised for that in 2016, firstly. But secondly, I think that the issue I, I actually didn't agree with Lee Anderson's comments. I thought that they were wrong, because I think you either... I if think they were clumsy. I, I, yeah. I, I, I know you did. I know you did. And and I think that, that if you're going to make a comment like that, um, you have to back it up with facts. And if you can't back it up with facts, you're wrong. And what he should have said if he did have those facts was, OK, I believe that he is in the control of, of, of Islamists because... Which he isn't. Because, which yeah. he isn't, but I'm saying what Lee Anderson could, could have said, because... He was part of a law firm that represented um, some of the 9-11 accused, uh, some people connected to 9-11. Um, he, he shared a stage with some very questionable people. He was part of the Muslim Council of Britain, which some people see as an extreme organisation. Others would disagree with that. Now, I, I'm not saying that that makes Sadiq Khan an, an extremist. I'm not saying that no. I agree. But what I'm saying is that, that, that for those people who want to join the dots, there is evidence to say that he has been in the company of extremists. So I happen to agree with you. I don't think Sadiq Khan is an extremist. I think that those comments were wrong. But but I think that's where Rene is getting at. And uh, I, I think that this is inflaming the conversation a lot further. I do not think there is any place to bring up things like that when we're discussing a comment that was very clearly Islamophobic, in my opinion. I do not understand. I do not understand you Renee, why you're bringing uh, why you're bringing these these things that you are bringing up because right now. If you people, don't actually believe, if you don't actually I don't believe, believe he's controlled. No, of course I don't. I don't believe our government is controlled. By it. But, but it I think does sound. It sounds like what I don't like about this is that it sounds like you believe that Sadiq Khan is making his decisions as mayor of London, political decisions. No, what I said, based, Stella, based what I on said influence. Was, you can see why people who look at his past are joining. I the don't dots. think these people looked at, the, at his past. I think these people looked at his religion and his last name. That's what I think they looked at. Because they didn't mention the things you are saying until now. Well, and, and that's the issue. If you're going to make that accusation, you have to make that issue. Now, there may be many people who will say, well, look, uh, and I'll give you the facts, Sadiq Khan's former law firm consulted on the defence of someone convicted in relation to 9-11. That is something that Sadiq Khan himself has admitted to. He's gone on the record talking about how sometimes when you're a lawyer, you, you, you end up representing people whose, whose values yeah. you, you don't agree with at all. Um, but but uh, there are going to be some people who will say, well, look, that's why I believe he's controlled by Islamists. And I think it would be fair to say, well, look, he was a lawyer at the time. But those are the examples that I think Rene is referring to as to why some people may join the dots. He's you still think completely that that's completely unrelated wrong? to his politics, to his career as a politician, to, to, to the things that he, he stands for, his values, his policies, completely unrelated. And this is why I think that bringing issues like that up is 
Islamophobic, actually. And I'm not trigger happy with Islamophobia. I agree with you, Rene. There is a problem. There are some people in British society who feel like it is too rude to talk badly about another religion, specifically about Islam. And yeah. I think that this often has to do, I don't know, maybe some 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 guilt, maybe their politics, maybe their, their, their manners, the way they were raised, whatever. I agree with you. I think it's ridiculous. We should be able to be against any religion. Um, but that doesn't mean that we should be allowed to judge people publicly, especially politicians, especially at a time when the emotions are running so high. I'm, I'm so the Liberal Democrats lost a leader once because of his religion. Because in his religion, they're against um, gay sex, homophobic, you would say. And he yeah. had to stand down because of that. Now, he said quite often, it doesn't affect my day-to-day -day work as a politician, it won't affect anything mm -hmm. I do, but he had to stand down. But yeah. that was okay? Yeah, but, but he had a specific belief, as you say. So, uh, I will tell you. Firstly, I do think sometimes with Christianity, I think that in the West, uh, people can be too harsh on Christians. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I remember the, the case with the gay wedding cake, mm -hmm. wedding cake in the US the a few years ago. Where Yes, uh, which I think it is it is not it is not okay I, but i don't think there should be a law preventing people from saying me as a business i don't i don't i don't feel comfortable doing this because it's my religion and i feel like i'm not allowed but by we my religion about politicians but, not being but going back to politicians i think where it differs with the liberal democrats is that for them their ideology is liberalism and being pro uh, pro 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 gay marriage and all of that and this is why he had to resign it's not just because he was christian the frustrating thing for me about Lee Anderson's comments going back about them is that actually, as happens so often in these things, there's usually a grain of a point in there which is valid. Yes. And actually, what it did, there is an issue, whether we like it or not, with extremist elements, not everyone, but extremist elements protesting on the streets of London which are intimidating people. That doesn't make everyone who's protesting that, but there is a problem with that. And what that's done is it's moved the conversation away mm. from that and it's actually made it more difficult mm. to have that conversation now because too many people will now be accused of Islamophobia, which I don't even love as a word, anti-Muslim sentiment I think is a better way of putting it, um, as a result of making what is I think a very fair point. There is a problem. But that's what at the slurs moment. like Islamophobia are designed to do. It's the weaponization of language designed to shut down conversation. But, but also if don't someone want. makes a stupid comment like Lee Anderson does, the, it's, I mean, he's yeah. probably the worst example we can come up with when it comes to this conversation. And also what it did wrong, is it I took believe. the spotlight off of Labour, who were against the ropes because of the Lindsay Hoyle debacle, and it changed it completely over to the Tories. It, it was stupid. Okay. In